All right, guys, here's what's on the bench today. This is a Dean Dime Razorback. And uh, it's covered in flames. I see the little razor right here at the 12th fret. I see it's got a Seymour Duncan pickup in it. And the bridge is just dangling here. The strings are loose here. First thing I'm going to do is put my trim block in there. And that will kind of hold the bridge nice and flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and restring this thing. So let's get started. Help me out. Hang out with me. Let's put new strings on this thing and clean it all up. So this is a double locking setup here. So the strings are locked down at the nut. And they are also locked in here at the bridge. And the strings are already loose, so I'm going to get down in here like this. And we can loosen these. And the strings should just fall right out. I can see that this um, D string, the saddle needs adjusted. It's way too far forward. So we can do that. So they've made a couple different versions of this guitar. But this one, it's uh, got the nice flame on here. Uh, I, I would say it's condition. It's. Uh, Oh, I don't know. It's probably like about a 5 out of 10. It's got a lot of little dings and stuff in it. All right, let's see here. We can adjust this saddle. So I think if I loosen this up, then I can just roll that back. I think I'm going to leave it right there. There we go, and uh, let's roll the G-string back a little bit. We're just eyeballing these right now, putting them in a spot where usually it's close to being intonated nicely. And then, of course, you can check the intonation after it's, the strings are back on it and it's all tuned up. Okay, I'm just going to roll this high E string back just a little bit. There we go. Okay, hopefully those will stay nice and uh, in the right spot. I mean, there's been times where you put string tension on it, and they'll move forward, which is not good. Okay, a little bit of Windex. Trying to shine this up a little bit. The guitar is very dirty. Okay, let me take my 10 millimeter wrench, and I'm going to snap the tuners down up here. Cool guitar, man. This thing, it would be fun to play something like this. I wish I was more of a shredder. I mean, I can play guitar. It's sort of, eh, he's okay, guitar player. But man, it sure would be fun to be one of those shredders. All right, I'm going to clean the fretboard. We've got some Diderio lemon oil. Put a bunch of that on. Man, I'm tempted to talk about John Cougar Melon Camp. 
and that guy is just nuts but uh yeah whatever I guess I'll leave John Cougar alone alright so we got some of this lemon oil on here and this will clean the fretboard so this guitar is a, it's kinda dirty but if I get down here to the frets they look pretty good there's no fret wear on this guitar so that is important very important even though the body has a nice collection of little dents and dings in it all the horns on these guitars these things always get dented up there's probably dents in every corner okay got a little bit of um, polishing compound and I'm just hitting these frets in an effort to shine them up and I know that I'm getting this polishing compound all over the fretboard so we'll have to clean all that off of there too okay well, this is an experiment, okay? I experiment from time to time. Try to see what happens. It never hurts. Well, I mean, sometimes maybe it does if you screw something up. But I own this guitar. This guitar is for sale. Okay, let's see there. Now yeah, let's just see. This was a customer's guitar. I wouldn't be experimenting. All right, you guys know that. Okay, so is this whole fretboard going to get stained, right? because of that polish that we just put on. Is it going to wipe right off? All these questions now. I love having a nice clean fingerboard. looks pretty good. Let me get my Stumac fret file out. Let's go along here. And Just hit these bread ends real quick. Not a big deal. Oh, that feels good right there. I think that's pretty good. Cool. That's not bad. I think we're ready for some strain. All right, guys, so before I put too much string tension on it, I'm going to snug the truss rod a little bit. Just about that much right there. Short scale guitar, you put the notch straight edge on there, you see how much. Um, you see how much room you've got underneath there and that looks really nice and straight now so real quick little adjustment before I get all the strings on it 
This guitar was sold to me. The guy that sold it um, told me it was just too big and too heavy. But there are some guitar players in this world. And this guitar is their dream guitar. This is what they want to play. You, you don't see them playing Les Pauls. You don't see them playing Telecasters. They want to be on a dime. They want to be playing Pantera songs and stuff like that. And they ain't no fooling around on a telly. And I see a lot of those guys in this guitar shop. All right, I think I can take this trem block out of here now. Let's see if it... Oh, okay, no, not yet. Let's, let's add a little bit of tension. Let's put tune up here. Okay, now we should be able to take that out. There we go. And just by looking at this guitar, I can see that our bridge is really, really high. So I'm gonna take a straight screwdriver and I am going to lower this. It's set way up high. I'm going to do a little bit on that side, a little bit on this side. So this guitar had another bridge in the case. So there's a good chance that it got sold to me because it just needed a good setup. Let's take another look at our string height. It's still super high. I'm gonna run these down in here further. Good. A little bit more. And then again, with my finger and my thumb, you can feel distance. And so I can feel that this side needs to go down a little bit more. And you can feel I'm getting level. <coughs> Let's see here. Let's just do this for a second. You know, it's getting close. Let's go ahead and tune it. And again, I'm going to tune it. Half step down, drop D. My bridge is still laying nice and flat. So we'll see, there's a really good chance I'm gonna have to take the back plate off and adjust the uh, claw. Right now, I'm just trying to get our strings. To be in the right neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Back plate's coming off. Oh, it doesn't have to come off. You can get access to it, but it looks 
like it's going to be quick and easy to pull it off of here anyhow so let's take it off let's get a good look at it yeah you can see like I was saying you can see a couple little nicks and some dings it was definitely loved by somebody for a while there got kind of dinged up okay okay so I want to loosen the claw a little bit and you can see it's in here pretty good so let's see if I loosen this thing up a little bit what it does and I always try to keep the distance between here and here consistent So let's flip it back over. Try it again. Okay, I'm going to loosen it some more. So it's a lot of back and forth and I know you guys in the comments you're like oh do it like this do it like that there's different ways guys do this and we all have our systems that work for us and you can offer suggestions in the comments please do It's getting closer. It's getting closer. Yeah, I'm kind of upset with John Cougar Mellencamp, guys. To be talking politics. Come on, man. Let's quit doing that. And then getting mad and kicking people out of the show and all that over politics. Come on, man. All right, let's see. We're getting closer. All right, you guys see where the bridge is laying? Okay, come on now, camera work. It's laying pretty flat now. That's what you want. Um, I probably could, you know, that looks pretty darn good right there. So just a little bit more tuning on it. Stretch the strings out a bunch of times. There's a lot of times where I'll be back here behind the nut, stretching the strings. to set with them for a while I know some some of you guys again in the comments you're like dude you're taking too long it's kind of a long procedure the more time you spend with a guitar the better chance you have of seeing everything that needs to be done and to really fine-tune it Kind of like those five-minute oil change places. They're they're trying to change your oil in five minutes, but they're they're missing the fact that your transmission's almost falling out, right? They 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 don't see it. You have to take your time. I take my time with stuff. I really try to see what's going on. 
don't really use tools and stuff as much as I just kind of use my eyeballs and kind of look things over. All right, I think it's okay to go ahead and cut these string ends off of here. Some guys will be like, no, don't do it yet. But I'm gonna go for it. There we go. Get those out of the way. I do read the comments, guys. I read a lot of your comments. Okay, let's look at the bridge. It's starting to flatten up, so we're gonna snuggle a little bit. Just a lot of back and forth. There's some beginners that come into the store and they want a guitar and a lot of times I'll talk them, I'll talk them out of getting something that has a Floyd. Cause really, who's got time for this, right? Ain't nobody got time for this. Looking pretty good. Now I know that they made some of these in China. Uh, this one doesn't say, I think this is a Korean one. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Alright, let's see if I can play this. This thing is like the definition of metal. It's in relatively good uh, condition, if you don't mind a couple little scrapes and bruises. <laughs>
man. Sorry about that noise. But um, this one is for sale. It's at Zim's Guitars down here in Mesa, Arizona. This is kind of for my locals because this is a hard one to ship. The case is so big for this guitar, it doesn't even fit in the shipping box. But uh, for all you guys that want one of these things or have always wanted these things, here it is. You guys, everybody have a great day. Go buy a guitar. Mm -hmm.